This is the Santa Bot, a six axis robot capable of taking presents from a rooftop sleigh, descending a chimney, and placing the gifts under a tree. And today, I'm gonna show you how I built this Holly Jolly Wally. Now I'm an automation and controls engineer. And when most people hear automation, their minds immediately jump to robots. But it is true that there are a lot of robots. And I wanted a fun way to showcase a little bit about this industry. And since it's Christmas season, I figured what better way than to do it on theme. Automation sometimes gets thrown around that it's coming for your job and that just isn't true. The only job automation is coming for is Santa's. And let's be honest, if you only worked one day a year, you should have seen this coming. The basic flow of how I want SantaBot to work is this. A position sensor will detect that a present is in place. The robot will traverse to the top of a chimney track, grab the present, fold itself up, travel down the chimney to the bottom of the track, unfold itself, and place the present underneath the Christmas tree. Easy, right? Now this is a type of robot called a six axis robot due to the six joints that it has, allowing for six degrees of freedom and rotation to basically any point in space. In industrial plants, these can be several orders of magnitude larger and lift extremely large loads or do complicated engineering tasks like laser welding or suction gripping, drilling, visual inspection, and more. But for my Santa bot, I have this awesome MyCobot 280 from the sponsor of today's video, Elephant Robotics, who we'll talk about more later in the video. And Cobot means cooperative robot, which is basically a quick way of saying this sort of robot shouldn't be able to do any harm to people, which is certainly not the case in many models of industrial robots. And this robot is actually running a Raspberry Pi, meaning there is essentially a tiny desktop computer embedded in the base of the robot, which means I get to program this thing in the super friendly and easy to use Python programming language, or even in a visual programming tool similar to Scratch called MyBlockly. First thing I had to do was just get it booted up and learn how to teach it a few basic positions. Essentially my first test was screw it down onto a platform, teach it to pick up from one side of itself, go to a vertical standing position in the middle, then place down on the other side. I was actually pretty thrilled with how smoothly this first test went and even got some pretty cool shots of the robot picking up and placing my GoPro camera. A lot of people would start tackling something as ambitious as replacing Santa Claus with a plan, but not me. I have the robot figured out, the rest of it I assume will just fall into place. What we have to think about is what does Santa actually do? The elves make the presents. Parents narc on their kids to say naughty or nice. So he is basically a vessel for taking presents from a sleigh on the roof to under the tree. And when you look at Santa's job as this closed system of inputs and outputs, you start to see how a robot might be able to replace this. And when you start thinking through what a six axis robot could do for you, it could take stuff off of a sleigh, no problem. If it's at the bottom of a chimney, it could place stuff under a tree or in a stocking, no problem. So really the only thing this robot's not gonna be able to do for us out of the box is go up and down the chimney. We need some vertical descent and ascent way for it to get back and forth to the sleigh so that billions of children worldwide can get their presents and the robot can replace the world's most famous one day a year employee. What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. And while trying to decide how to do this, I got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then I decided that a stepper motor that could turn a screw conveyor would do just fine because screw conveyors have a pretty solid ability to hold decent amounts of weight vertically. And then all you have to do to get them to move up and down is spin the shaft. The two biggest challenges here are definitely we need some sort of custom platform that the robot can mount onto this vertical screw conveyor. And then actually programming in the motions of the robot to grab something, go into a traveling position, descend, and then put it in the right spot is not as simple as I made it sound, but we won't know how hard this is gonna be till we dive in, so let's dive in. Let's quickly talk through the hardware I know we're gonna use. We've got the six axis robot with the gripper head that's going to grab and release presents uh, from the sleigh and then in the right position. We've got a stepper motor, which we're going to use to drive the screw conveyor up and down, which means we're gonna use a stepper motor controller because this thing can take 24 volts from a power supply, but it can be controlled from a five volt signal coming out of the robot. 
And then to actually tell the robot that it's either at the top or the bottom of the system, I wanna use these position feedbacks, which are basically little pieces of metal that uh, connect two terminals when you're in position. So we'll have one of these at the top and we'll have one of these at the bottom to tell the thing that it's traveled its full distance. And the last things I know we're gonna need are essentially the screw conveyor itself, which is going to move it up and down, and then a guide rail that's going to be used as a second point of contact for the platform, because if you were just using this to move up and down, it would have a substantial amount of rock back and forth. So I'm pretty sure we have the hardware planned, but actually building the thing is gonna be a different story. Like I said, we're gonna start with basically a giant screw. It has a little mechanism on it that's basically going to act as a carriage, and this is what's going to slide up and down as we turn the screw. To make sure that the whole thing doesn't just go together while we turn it, though you need to fix it on the ends so you have mounts for either side of your screw You're going to have a stepper motor driving it but to ensure that that carriage can't move on the screw you need an additional linear guide rail and its basic job is just to fix the motion of that carriage by being something that the platform can rest on and it has now two points of linear contact so it'll allow it to move in just the direction we want it to move in All right, so I've got the guide rail screwed down and I've got the uh, screw screwed down as well as my servo with the coupler in the shaft. So what you can see is the uh, body still moves because there's no platform yet that anchors it to a second spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this piece of like hobby cardboard I had sitting around um, to make sure that I have the holes in the right spots. This will kind of be my template and then I'll probably move it onto something like wood that's a little more permanent, but this will let me make sure the locations and the actual holes are in the right spot. All right, so I've got very basic like rough draft platform here. Anyways, you can see it turning a little bit by hand, but it'll get a lot better if we can control this thing automatically. So I've got an Arduino that's just gonna send a pulse signal to turn it on. So basically, if I remove this uh, enable inhibit, and it's a little noisy, but you can see the motor gets going. I'm gonna work on reducing the noise and the platform starts traveling to the right. We can definitely increase the speed and we will. And then we can switch the direction. And so just like that, we get bi-directional. So now we just need to get the robot on the platform. All right, so I was definitely thinking this platform would be temporary, but the robot kind of fits on it perfectly and it's very rigid. So I'm gonna put it back on the mounts and I'm gonna see this may actually just be the permanent platform, even though it's uh, looking a little scrappy from the bottom. Um, I think this might be what we go with because it fits really well. All right, I'm super excited to have the robot mounted on top of this guy. With the basic platform, it is now time for the chimney test where I am going to put the uh, cert, I'm going to turn the stepper motor on. I'm going to have it descend and then I'm going to have it ascend and make sure that it can carry the weight of the six off and this platform top to bottom, no problem. Put the direction pin to go down and I am going to let this thing go. <laughs> All right. And it just starts going, no problem. Now let's go ahead and bring it back up. And it looks like it's totally fine, no problem. And I'm hiding all the actual electronics of the project behind the chimney. From the front side, we've obviously, we've got the robot. Uh, when we're running it, we won't need these wires off the side because these are for the monitor and like the mouse and the keyboard. And I hope to load a program on it that can run without this. So there will be roughly four cables that you can see here that will not be on it. So really what you want to focus on is the power cable and the, uh, and the input and output wires that go through and they wrap around to the back side, which I'll show you in just a sec. And then the servo motor, and then I've got an up position feedback and it's currently touching the down position feedback. So now let me show you what's going on hidden underneath. Okay, we've got the power adapter for the Raspberry Pi down here. 
And then we've got wiring uh, from the servo and one position sensor coming over the top, the other position sensor coming down from the side. A 24 volt power supply uh, that takes 120, so it takes wall outlet power. This is called DIN rail, super common in industrial automation and controls, uh, less common in hobby um, builds and stuff. And then the last thing is the stepper motor controller uh, hooked up and mounted to the back side of the board. To sort of start training this thing and getting a good vision for the final product, we need to get this thing vertical. And it took me a lot of testing and iteration to get to a functional state, but I actually got the skeleton of the build done pretty quickly. There was just one problem. It didn't look anything like a house or a chimney or a roof or a sleigh or a fireplace or Christmas in general. I'm not really a crafty person, if you watched my Halo helmet video, you saw me embed some sweet electronics in a helmet that another incredible maker had already created. But since it's the most wonderful time of the year, it might as well be a time for challenging myself to not just make this functional, but make it fun. And time's of the essence, because we've got presents to deliver. And this project would not have been possible without the sponsor of today's video, Elephant Robotics. In addition to this incredible MyCobot 280, they produce a wide range of robots and electronics perfect for those in industry or for hobbyists and makers. These robots are easy to use and get started with, and the Elephant Robotics team has been super friendly and useful for technical support when I needed it. Overall, I've been really impressed with the quality of the product, and it's awesome seeing a 6-axis robot at a price that makers and hobbyists could consider buying. Since ordinarily getting your hands on a robot, even just for learning, could cost tens of thousands of dollars at the industrial scale. So thank you to Elephant Robotics for sponsoring the video. Be sure to check them out at the links in the description below. How sure does look swell, Clark. Because it's Christmas and the season of giving, I want to try and use this robot to give my wife a present. <laughs> yeah, you can remove the tree. Okay, catch it. Aww, Merry Christmas! <laughs> Bye, robot! <Okay. laughs> Do you feel like this is the coolest thing I've ever built? or? We're up there. <laughs> what do you think of this build? Really cool. What would you give this out of 10? Oh, 100 out of 10. Do you feel like this explains what I do at work at all? <laughs> what has this taught you about the world of automation and controls engineering? Oh, so much. Do you feel like you could see this uh, completely replacing Santa in the next few years? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you say, have a very elephant robotics Christmas? Have a very... <laughs> Wait, what was it? Elephant robotics. <laughs> Have a very... <laughs> Have a very robotic... No. no. Anyways guys, I had a ton of fun building this project and making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. A very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to make Lamaster Tech possible. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone, Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.